And it all began in 1956 with Ivy Griffin signing me to my first professional contract. And of course, that was Buck O'Neill when I was making my transition from the minor league to the major league who counseled and guided me through those adjustment periods. And there were the teammates I had in the 60s and in the 70s, which were some of the greatest, especially the 69 ball club. We batted as individuals and we played as a team. These and many people have made a great impact on my life. And in growing up, you always remember that one lady that uh, when you was in grade school and her name was Lily A. Dixon. I could remember from time to time as Dixon would come in the classroom year after year and the words she would repeat Good, better, best. Never let it rest until the good is better and the better is best. I knew the words meant nothing as a youngster, but year after year, they would surface and become more and more pronounced as my career unfolded. By working hard, I wanted to be the best ball player in the big league. I put these words into action and worked hard and hard each year. These few words were the driving force behind my desire to succeed. In baseball, the measurement and pinnacle will and always be election to the Baseball Hall of Fame. And now that I'm here in the Hall of Fame, I think I could say I'm one of the best. <laughs> Along with 198 others who have been enshrined in this hall since 1939, my election this year is of special importance to me. If it weren't for the courage of three great men 40 years ago, I might not have the opportunity to have played 18 years in the big league and stand before you today. What occurred at that time took a deal of courage and the belief and the ability of one man and of the righteousness and the decision of the two others. In January 1947, the owners voted 15 to 1 to keep blacks from the major league. That vote led Branch Rickey, who was the president and owner of the Brooklyn Dodgers, to call Happy Channel. Shortly after that phone call, history was made in a place called the cabin in Vassail, Kentucky. During that meeting, they decided to bring Jackie Robinson into the major league, paving the way from the minority participation in America's greatest pastime. And it had nothing to do with the color of Jackie's skin, but all to do with his ability to play the game. All of this, of course, were proven in succeeding years by Jackie Robinson, outstanding performance on and off the field. An induction to Baseball Hall of Fame in 1962, this followed by the induction of Branch Rickey in 1967 and of Happy Chandler in 1982. All of these great men deserve thanks and gratitude for taking that courageous step. Two of them are no longer swift to stay, but I personally like to thank you, Happy Channel.
for your outgoing and steadfast support in the game of baseball, not only as commissioner, but from year to year coming up here and getting involved in these annual ceremonies. Thank you, sir. The past 40 years have been difficult, but, but it was laid, the ground was laid by such stars as Jackie Robinson, Larry Dobert, Marnie Irvin, who is with us, Satchel Page, and others. As late as 1959, I could recall in Corpus Christi, Texas, when I couldn't eat at a lunch counter with the team. The owner told me to go around to the back if you want to eat in this restaurant, and you eat in the kitchen by the stove. I was furious, but hungry. As we travel up and down the highway on the road, I had to be taken to a private home. I couldn't stay at the hotel with the rest of the team. I think most of you agree at this time that wasn't right. Thank you. These injustices wasn't fixed by Major League Baseball. They had to be fixed for all minorities years later by the government. This ceremony today is a reason to celebrate, but it's also a time for reflection, a time to examine the game's strength and weaknesses by improving what is good and correcting what is bad. Yes, the road is rocky and long, but the time to pave the way for true equality is now. The next courageous step rests with the owners of 26 major league ball clubs. They can make the difference, but by not looking at the color of a man's skin, but by examining his ability, talent, knowledge, and leadership. If this is the land of opportunity, then let it truly become the land of opportunity for all. Questions have been raised in the recent, recent uh, months by the media about the participation of blacks and other minorities in decision-making position in baseball. The issue wouldn't have come up if every job in baseball was open to every, re every creed, race, and nationality. But this is not the case. We minorities for the past four decades have demonstrated our talents as players. Now we deserve the chance and consideration to demonstrate similar talent as third base coaches, as managers, as general managers, as executives in the front office, and yes, owners of Major League Ball Club themselves. <laughs> Baseball has become considered America's favorite pastime. Now let's make the sport that reflects the true spirit of our great country, a nation that more than 200 years ago was dedicated to the proposition that all men all men are created equal. Yes, plans and words can be transformed into actions and deeds. We ask for nothing less, but we seek what is just. I know the experience I've had over the past years as a coach have helped me to prepare my the days when I'd be considered for managerial or executive position with a major league ball club. I always set high goals for achievement and looking forward to and welcome the challenging opportunity. As I reflect my life, I often think back to my mother's favorite hymn, 
and it was how great thou art, which also have become a great, great hymn of mine. The, re the words reflect the beauty of life and the appreciation each of us should have for the spe special blessing that is ours. And I ponder them often because I thank the almighty God for giving me the ability to play Major League Baseball and protecting me over my 2,488 games. The opportunity to have made so many friends in this game of baseball. I know God is watching over us and contributing to this joyous occasion by granting us such a wonderful day. Thank you for, thank you. Thank you for joining me at this most precious time of my life. Thank you and thank you very much.